And now, a story from the beginnings of Eat, Sell, Two, taking place in my favorite hotel in Mexico, based around a Duende-like character, Lorca's Duende, a spirit of inspiration and creativity, sort of like the quantum mechanic's strange attractor who collects and changes the energy of time and place, based in somebody I once met, way back, out of the time that the book was written. The story will not be over. Even the stories I'm to tell, not over. Which is why, perhaps, even if I remember little of the specifics of that particular evening well, the physics or the physical space of it anyway, how it seems to occupy a quantum universe whose shape I don't know, nor the equations to solve for it still. When I walk back into the Art Deco lobby of the Hotel Majestic, decades later now a best western chosen only for its location, overlooking the Socalo, Mexico City's central square, for my return for the 50th anniversary of the Tlatelolco massacre in 2018, it will seem so very familiar that I'll see myself entering ahead of El Flamenco, barely registering the Talavera tile twisting up its staircases as we get into the elevator. One of the ten oldest in Mexico I'll learn on my return, loving the sound of its door closing, then opening again to empty its passengers out onto their floor with that distinct whish, clack, crunch, then hum that distinguishes such rides as the operator pulls the steel accordion mesh across and back after the hesitation at coming to a stop inches too high, then too low, to make me flex my knees and lean against the old wood wall more than once until I can no longer tell the difference between the resaca, the retreating tide or hangover, from the long flight in the DC-3 up from Oaxaca, or the jet more recently taken down from Canada, so that when walking the corridor to my room, dragging my free hand along the continued Talavera wainscoting, I will often enough feel El Flamenco behind me, sensations that will come and go over the days I spend there, each image perhaps that little bit clearer, and why not? What more perfect place could there be for such a tale as mine if only for the romance, el romance of it? Not the erotic adventure so much as the old epic meaning, romance and romancero, the song, the story, the epic cycle of its time all of it coming together the evening of the demonstration on October 2nd, 2018, something I'll know by instinct has to occur the not that night of the 50th anniversary of the massacre, even when I book the room, that there will be no way around the need for that movement in reverse between the site of such disastrous repression in the plaza of the three cultures and such effervescent elation in the Socolo to begin its march in tragedy and end where we most felt our triumph, days when we still believe the movement could accomplish its goals so that by the time the 50th anniversary demonstration is over, the speech is done on this night in which it is so clear that el 2 de octubre no se olvida, the 2nd of October, the massacre in Tlatelolco will not be forgotten. My hotel room will seem the safest of spaces to contemplate the meaning of a time of comeuppance and coming of age to let history's broad scope distill itself into one night 
in a place that continues to let me gaze out onto the world as I hear the voices of the past and future murmuring below me. In the speeches of old leaders and acquaintances, younger representatives from the years between, and those young people who will treasure this day as their own entry into consequencia, into commitment, an oceanic tide that will let me swirl inside my own small eddy in the currents of history. So why not let my narrator that piece of me that makes this story, sit that night with El Flamenco in a room that could so easily have been this one, trying to examine closely the clear moments, the shadows moving of that long day she has lived. All of it, resaca now, the things brought by the tide floating to its surface to demand explanation what ships, what depths, what creatures they come from. Even as I wiggle my toes again on the bed and see those sunburned scars from that long ago disastrous trip and press more than click my bare heels together with a, with a desire to be transported to another world. To find El Flamenco sitting across from me looking out the balcony door onto a socolo containing a so much smaller national flagpole than the one the demonstrators surround these decades later with its flags at half-mast for the official day of mourning. Even if back then I still might have imagined soldiers so like the ones I will see coming to raise the flag each morning of my anniversary stay, and mention to El Flamenco briefly those I will have hallucinated often enough onto our roof in the months before I meet him in Puerto Escondido. The soldiers that I already know had looked down onto each march into the Socalo, armed with machine guns, from the roofs of the National Palace opposite. And though I may not mention by name the Mexica war god Huitzilopochtli, hummingbird in the south, hummingbird on the left, whose precinct once occupied this space, I do not doubt I will say something about how this is a, spa a place from which human sacrifice is still ordered as I gesture toward the National Palace. Not that El Flamenco won't have followed at all, and certainly it will be talked of in his bar, but he hadn't been in the city, and while he'd run into one or two people who'd been there on the vast demonstrations, he hadn't met anyone who'd been in Tlatelolco itself until each cell. So that I'll say, I'm surprised you haven't heard the whole story. the way I will feel in that room, the impact of that story, that whole story. And in that room, in that hotel, with that Talavera tile, it will finish the process which gives me the power to tell it. Thank you. El dos de octubre. No se olvida. For all the cuates of the 68. Gracias.